I want people to know that I want their success as much as they do. Janet Hodson is a law firm human resources manager. Growing up, she always believed in justice and fairness for all, and that resonates in her work today. Janet had been working in law firms on litigation teams for almost 10 years when she had her twin girls. She found her true passion when she returned to work and her firm provided her the rare opportunity for her to work with their managing director and grow into an HR and managerial position. 17 years later, Janet is the HR manager and firm administrator at John Southward, a mid-sized progressive law firm in Victoria with two satellite offices on Vancouver Island. She is always striving to facilitate a healthy, supportive, and happy work environment and doesn't believe that hierarchy determines how people should be treated. Leading by example, Janet encourages teamwork and demands mutual respect to support a collegial corporate culture that inspires high productivity. Status quo is not her style. She believes there's always room for improvement. Please help me welcome Human Resources Manager Janet Hodson. Thank you so much for joining me today, Janet. Well, thank you for having me. I, I really appreciate it. And I'm excited about our conversation. So am I. And one of the things actually, I'm, I'm just going to sort of back up a little bit before we get into our conversation. I, I just really uh, want people to know, I think when they think of the HR department, you know, it's a scary place to go, or it's not part of your legal team, so you don't care, or you don't feel like you're being looked after. Uh, but uh, because I've known you for a long time, I have actually watched you really, really go to bat for the staff that you work with and quite frankly, get your ass kicked on their behalf. And um, I think people don't know how much people like you uh, really go to bat for, for the people that they work with and for and to try, it's like you're the glue, you know, you're trying to keep, keep the place, keep all the wheels turning. And I, so before we get into our conversation, I just really wanted to be, to be clear on that because that's one of the things I appreciate about you so much. Well, thank you for that. And um, you're right. People don't realize it. And it's certainly not something that uh, is advertised, <laughs> you know? No. So, thank you. And I think it's probably too, because you're part of the management team. So, mm -hmm. you know, you're sort of in the middle, you know, you're, you're. Oh, yeah. It's like sitting on an island all by yourself sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> right. When you're putting a team together or bringing somebody into the firm, what are the things that you're looking for? What, what, where do you start? Uh, well, I think what's most important when you're adding to a team that you've already cultivated, it's, it's making sure that that person is going to fit within that team, complement the team um, and have the right attitude um, to work within that team. Part of that comes from developing a, a mission and a corporate culture within the firm so that you know, and, and knowing your people. You've got to know the lawyers and, and, and know the, the staff. So for me, it's really important in making sure that that person is uh, mission appropriate. Now, I have to say, this is a phrase that one of the lawyers I work with uses, mission appropriate. And it's, it's so true. Um, the person uh, has to be a good fit. It's true what they say, you know, only one bad apple. That's all it takes. One bad apple. So <clears throat> I'm constantly striving to ensure that I'm not bringing in that one bad apple into an already cohesive team. Right. Let's start from, from the beginning. When you're looking at resumes, do you have preferences for resumes? I know I have preferences when I look at a resume, but it, and I think a lot of people get really worked up when they're putting their resumes together or their, their application packages together. Um, do, tell, can you tell me about any of your preferences, what you like to see? 
Uh, sure. Well, I'll, I'll start with the most important one, and that is uh, no typos, no spelling mistakes. Um, I always believe that somebody is sitting in their home or, you know, they're putting together their resume and they've got lots of time to do that and proofread it and go over it with a fine tooth comb before they submit it um, in application for a job. If there's errors in that resume, it's going to be very difficult for them to be successful in a law firm when they've got deadlines and um, uh, pressures of, of getting things done correctly. I mean, I mean you're, the work that you're doing is affecting other people, the clients, the lawyer you work with, maybe even your colleagues around you. So if you can't get your resume right, when you don't have any stress around your time constraints, how are you gonna be able to function? So I certainly, that's, that's probably my first thing. Um, other than that, m my preference is uh, not too wordy, um, short but direct. Give me your education and your work experience. I'm, I'm looking for uh, how long you've stayed at different positions or whether you've jumped around, what kind of education you have, what knowledge you have with respect to different software programs. That's always important. I don't need your picture. I don't really care what you look like. And I don't, I don't really care about your hobbies. Um, right now, that initial without seeing you, without meeting you, I just wanna know if you've got a background, uh, the background that we need. That fits the, the job. What about yeah. things like board experience and things like that? It's not a hobby, but it could be a beneficial skill. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I would like to know about that. And volunteer experience. Volunteer experience. Right. And what about, uh, what about references? So I know I have, you know, some written references maybe are a thing in the past, but you know, I prefer to see a mix. What, what's your preference? Oh, I think a mix, I think a mix is great. Um, uh, written references, uh, I've seen how some written references get put together and um, I wouldn't put a lot of weight on written references. Uh, I know that when employees are being let go because there is a problem with them. Sometimes to ease the pain, it's easy to say, I'll put together a reference letter for you so you'll you know, have some success finding another job. So I don't put a lot of weight on the written references. What I really want is to talk to somebody who's worked directly with that person, who has experience with their work and how they handle deadlines and stress and um, uh, you know how, how dependable they are. Um, so having somebody that's worked directly with them is, is, is really important um, when I'm talking to references. That's, that's what I want. And what about somebody coming from another market? So certainly the market where we are, it's fairly unique. Uh, we're kind of small to medium-ish, uh, but we're a capital city. So what if somebody comes from say Toronto, either a smaller market or a bigger market? You know, do you, what are, what would be your advice for people coming from other markets into, into say one like ours? Well, there's, there's huge differences in the different markets. I mean, even Vancouver to Victoria, very different uh, in terms of um, how, maybe how hierarchy is viewed. Uh, there's a lot more paralegals in the Vancouver market than there is in the Victoria market. Um, pay, pay scale can be quite different. Uh, expectations, though, in, in the Vancouver market are much higher, much higher. Uh, 
not to suggest that the Victoria market doesn't have high expectations. They do, but I've, I've heard lawyers say that they moved to Victoria because they wanted to slow down a little bit. <laughs> so they wanted to get into a Victoria firm because um, there's less pressure. So, so there's certainly a, a lot of differences. And sometimes too, somebody that's been working at a larger firm their job responsibilities are um, limited. They're dealing with one, one aspect of a legal file rather than seeing a file from start to finish. Right. Whereas I think the majority of legal assistants, I mean, there's some ex exceptions, but the majority uh, in the firms in Victoria are dealing with files from start to finish. It's not piecemeal, so. Right. For your current employees, how do you, um, do you encourage additional training and support? How do you fill the holes? How do you find, if you see that somebody's um, maybe needs to work on a skill or if, or if uh, you know, there's a hole to fill somewhere in your team, what, do you have a structure in place to, to assist with that? Well, I think I, we've got a few different things in, in place. Um, one of the things is annual reviews, which we do every year without fail. And one of the most important things in that review is determining what the legal assistant's goals are. Where do they want to go? Because you can you can suggest training and enroll um, the staff in different training courses, but if they're not interested, <laughs> they're, it's a complete waste of time. So understanding what their goals are and where they want to be a year from now, three years from now, five years from now is really important. That, that helps me structure how training is developed. Um, one of the other things that we did in our office and that I'm a firm believer in is, is sharing the knowledge. So many talented legal assistants um, in one office and sometimes they have skills and talent in different areas with different programs and nobody knows. Nobody knows that, they, that they're awesome with Excel. Um, so... You know, numerous times I've heard staff say, oh, it took me forever to figure out this formatting. Uh, it almost took me all day to figure it out and get it right. Where you've got another staff member that, that says, hey, you should have asked me, I know how to do that. Well, you've got all this wasted time because they didn't know that somebody else in the office maybe 10 feet away, knew how to solve that problem. So we started a training um, that was happening one day a week uh, for 15, 20 minutes where the staff took part in training. We would gather in the boardroom and one of the staff members would provide a, a real quick demonstration on how to do something whether it be in Excel, whether it be with the accounting program, um, formatting. And because it was a staff member, um, I think they could also train in a way that the other legal assistants would receive the information. And then following that, the staff knew who to go to if they ever had a problem with that program. So it, it, it worked out really well. Now, COVID threw a bit of a wrench in that. We can't all gather in the boardroom and, and have that kind of training. And um, I haven't developed uh, a real good system for doing that training uh, through Zoom or, or some other video conference program, but it's certainly my goal for this year. That's exceptional. I think... I mean, not that probably, in my opinion, matters about what your firm does, but uh, first off, you want to know what your staff's goals are. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. You know, if I rarely hear that. And uh, and secondly, you've got a support system in place. And one of the things I learned when I was teaching people how to use litigation support software was because I use the software in my own job, I would not just teach somebody, oh yeah, here's how to use this database. I would teach somebody how to work their file using that database, right? Oh yeah, this is really cool. Remember when we used to do all this paper stuff? Now you can do it here. And, and that was, that it was so exceptional. And I, when I learned how to do those things too, I couldn't believe it. I mean, my whole world opened up. Yeah. So, to, you know, I, that's really, a, a, I'm just so impressed hearing that you've put that together for your people. So let's um, talk about some of the stuff that might be a little bit tricky. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, here she goes. <laughs> How about with uh say, you know, I don't I don't want to say um you know you have problem staff or or you know what happens when you're when you run into somebody in your office who's who's got a real problem. I know when I'm speaking to people in my office. In, they're here because they think they need a new job or, you know, they need help unwinding a problem in their job and it turns out to be something else completely. So uh, can, how, do you, how do you work with stuff like that? And how do you, you know, how do you work your way through that? Um, well, uh, I sometimes, certainly sometimes feel like I'm a counselor and um, and that's okay. I want to know where, where the staff are. And, uh, to, to some extent, uh, it's, it's the staff's responsibility. I trust the staff. They're professionals. They've got experience. I trust them to let me know if there's something going on that's going to affect their performance and affect their job and, and, and their, their work product. I mean, that's one of the big problems, I think, in, in uh, workload. We, as, I say women, but I'm sure men do it too. We just take it on, pile it on. We can do it. We'll get it done, no problem. And legal assistants, they're, they're the best at saying, I'll get that done, no problem. And I'm always telling them, hey, I'm trusting you to be the professional that you are and let me know if something is going to affect your job. Um, they don't always, they don't always do that. So it does, it happens where they've got some issue they wanna talk about, they need some extra time off or, um, you know, maybe something to do with their family. And as we dig a little bit deeper, yeah, there's something really going on for them. So I always direct them to our employee assistance program. It's a part of our uh, health benefits. Um, and we just added, another component to the employee assistance program just to ensure that the staff have what they need. They need to have access to um, counseling and support. And this company provides counseling for all sorts of things. Uh, it could be work related, it could be family related, financially related, it could be addiction related. Uh, no matter what the problem is, those counselors are there and available 24 seven. So I always make sure that they have that information and suggest that they go that route. Even after doing that, it, I, I have to check back in with them. And that requires monitoring. You, when you've got somebody that's got some issues, um, you have to monitor how their work is going. You have to check in with them to make sure that they're on track or or, or that they have the help that they need. So it's tricky, but common. 
Right. And we do have you lives, answer your right? phone? You answer your phone at nighttime? Yeah. Always. Always. I how do you not? When there's somebody that I work with that is calling me in the evening or really early in the morning, um, I, I can't ignore that. That's, there's something going on. And, and I'm the go-to in the office. I'm the problem solver. You got a problem? You tell Janet and I will fix it. Even if I don't have the knowledge to fix it, I will find out how to fix it or find somebody that does have the knowledge and that problem is gonna be fixed. Or I have been known to say, give that to me to look after. You continue doing what you need to do and I'll figure that out. Um, so it's, it's only natural that if I'm solving some of their work-related problems, that if they have some other issue going on, that they're going to call me. Right. And do you, are you clear sort of, I'm going to take care, you know, with so what it, I hate to use the term expectations, but what the expectations are in that, um, you know, I'm going to look after your work problem. And I am going to expect or hope that you are going to look after your personal problem. Do you, I mean, how frank do you get? I know with my coaching clients, I bottom line everything. I'm frank. So, do, you know, how, how, where's the boundary for you in, in that way? Um, I could be more frank than what I, than what I am. Um, I, I like to support people. I like to help people if I can. Um, it's very difficult for me to turn away and say, okay, now that's, now that's you. <laughs> I'm out of it. I, I can't do that. I should be, I should be more frank in that regard for sure. I think it, it, it is, it, it is difficult when you're a caring person you know, and you, and you, I, perhaps for me, it's just that I don't have a lot of patience. <laughs> so I'm just like, okay. <laughs> but, you know, I don't know if you can see, I have a row of cards at the back of my office where yeah. I send people out the door with, you know, a, a card of somebody who can help them because they're professionals. I'm not qualified, you know, in that department. That's perfect. And just to clarify, I don't give advice, except for you should speak to somebody through the employee assistance program. I'm well aware that I am not a trained counselor, <laughs> but, but I will always listen. I will always listen to um, somebody's issues or concerns. Sometimes they just need to get it off their chest. Right. I want people to know that I want their success as much as they do. So no matter what advice I give them, I, it, it's really to help them succeed. And, you know, it's unfortunate that some people that come into my office and I need to talk to about something, like something's not working or um, we need to improve something. Um, certainly there's a lot, there's people that don't like to be criticized or they take it as criticism. And it doesn't matter how you phrase it sometimes, that's, that's how it's going to be received. But really, I just want them to be successful. And whether that's about behavior or, um, you know, not, demonstrating that mutual respect that I quite frankly demand um, in the workplace. It's the advice I give them is really just to help them move forward, reach their goals. And what if somebody was new to HR? So sometimes in law firms, I, the people I'm talking to are the lawyers and the only time I ever talk to the HR person if it's if I'm getting paid or something. So 
What if somebody's new to HR or perhaps new to a law firm or from somewhere else, HR in some other area and they're new to law? What, what kind of advice or would you give them or, or what do you want to see? What do you need them to know? You know, you shouldn't have this job unless you need this. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, that would be different, maybe a little bit difficult for me to answer because I haven't worked in HR in another industry. Legal is all I know. So for me to give somebody advice on maybe what's different in the, in the legal market to some other industry, um, I wouldn't know where to start. But I will say that they should have an understanding of the people and the relationships that need to be developed between the lawyer and the assistant. It's a very unique relationship. Um, and you can't fill uh, an, a, a vacant position for a lawyer without knowing that lawyer and how they practice. Uh, it, would be, it would be impossible to find the right fit uh, without knowing the people. Right. So maybe if you're new to a firm, at least the most important thing before you start figuring out how you're gonna make people fit where is to find how you're, or to get to know everybody first. Yeah. When I first made a move um, to the firm that I'm at now, it was about two years ago, maybe a little bit more. The very first thing I did was I made appointments to speak with every single person in that firm individually. And my questions that I asked were, you know, what are your goals? What are your background? Um, what do you really value? in where you work here. What's most important to you? What are some things you would like to see change? Um, so lots of different questions, lots of conversations. I got to know everybody and really well in that first, it was through the first week, maybe two weeks that I spoke with everybody. And um, it really gave me a great idea of what the current uh, corporate culture was and maybe where we needed to improve um, to get to the corporate culture that we, we, we needed to have. Um, it also helped me to identify uh, some problem areas and um, make some changes that would benefit everybody there. So getting to know the people, yeah, that's, that's key. It's not, it's not good enough anymore to be able to do the work. There's so many more aspects to being a good legal assistant and a good legal em, or, um, a good employee. Being able to work with the people around you, work within a team and be supportive of your colleagues is all part and parcel of being successful at your job. So not everybody understands that. Mm -hmm. And I think too, being really good at the work. I mean, I, I know a lot of people who are great at what they do and they're terrible with people. Yeah. <laughs> right. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. Or, you know, there's a little bit of, um, they get put in a supervisory position and then there's, there's that, sh there's short period there where people go through and that, you know, I've, I've gone through that period for me, probably it was longer than normal people because I had to learn and figure things out. But there, there's that period of time where, it, you know, you're the great and powerful and it, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's uncomfortable for everybody mm -hmm. until you figure it out, you know, like, right. Oh, right. This is, there's more here and this is about the whole, not, not, you know, not me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Once you come to that realization, it's, 
um, it makes life a bit easier for sure, uh, especially in an office. And that's that, you know, like I've said, hierarchy, everyone knows what the hierarchy is in a law firm. Everyone knows that. Don't throw it in their face. It's not necessary. It's not necessary. And, and when I say throw it in their face, it, you know, um, I've heard comments like, well, she's just a, whether it be an associate or she's just the receptionist or she's just, no, she's a, an important member of the team or he's an important member of the team. Um, yeah, that hierarchy is, everybody knows that. We don't need to put any emphasis on it. Right. And I'm the same in my role. Um, you know, I, I'll answer the phones. The receptionist needs to go do something. Yeah, I'll grab the phones while you go do that. Uh, dishwasher needs to be unloaded. Yeah, I'm unloading that dishwasher. I'm not above doing any task that's required to ensure that the firm is moving forward and successful. Me too. I'm an all hands on deck kind of girl. Yeah. I think that firms are still allowing um, the mistreatment of staff, whether it be from a lawyer or from other staff. Uh, I think it's happening and I think it's, it, I think that it's easier to turn a blind eye to it than really deal with it. And it's a liability now. I mean, WorkSafe will now cover a claim uh, of somebody needing to be off work because of bullying and harassment. And you can bet that if they get a claim from your office for that, that they're going to investigate. And they're gonna keep a close eye on you and your premiums that you're paying for that coverage. Um, if you're allowing that kind of behavior to happen within your office, it's detrimental. It's detrimental to somebody's well-being. Why, why would you allow one of your employees, your employees that you are responsible for, you have a fiduciary duty to ensure their safety within your work environment? Why would you allow them to be mistreated? And do you think some of that is generational? Or do you think it's just we're human beings and that's the way we work? Um, I don't notice that it's generational. I think that most lawyers just want to practice law. They, they don't want to deal with that kind of stuff. And, and in some respects, I've actually heard lawyers say, oh, well, I didn't think it was my place to get involved. Um, so, so they didn't. But I think understanding the responsibility to, that they have to their employees, maybe they would have gotten involved. I mean, I certainly would. If I saw somebody being mistreated or berated, um, I would absolutely jump in there and say, let's everybody take a breath and then we're gonna sit down and talk. I mean, we've got a, a, a formal procedure now in our office where if somebody feels that they are being bullied or mistreated, they're, it's, it's official in the way that they report it to me. And it is dealt with. It is dealt with to resolution. It is not dealt with in a way that, you know, let's hope things get better. Um, no, those sorts of things, I, that's, that's a sore spot for me. It, even when I was a little kid, 
if I saw somebody being bullied, oh, I was right in there. And I'm not a big person. <laughs> you know, I'm only five foot tall. But um, yeah, I would jump in there and uh, try and protect, protect the victim of that kind of behavior. And do you find with your procedure, do you find people are reluctant to sort of, I don't want to say fill out the form, but make the formal complaint? Because I've certainly seen, you know, people come to me with formal complaints and so they'll write this big long email or you know they'll explain it all or come and meet with me but they're very reluctant to make a formal complaint well it it's a requirement it's um it's a part of their employment contract they if they witness that behavior or if they're subjected to it they have to they have to report it. Um, it's part of their responsibility as an employee in, in our office. So thankfully, um, our office environment is very collegial and lots of mutual respect and lots of support for each other. So I, I don't have any concerns. But I do know that if I brought somebody in and there were issues like that, I, I, I have faith that it would be reported. They've usually been, um, nobody's ever talked to them about they were, the way they treated their coworkers. Nobody's ever said anything because they're good with their work, the legal work, Nobody's ever said, hey, that behavior is really not conducive to a good work environment. So now you're at a point where you've got somebody who's been with a firm for maybe 20 years. They're awful to everyone around them. The firm's losing staff because of that person because let's face it a lot of the newer legal assistants they're not going to put up with that they're not going to be treated that way um sometimes there's nothing left to do but to let that person go get that toxicity out of the work environment because it spreads it spreads like wildfire now, I also believe that in some respects that they believe that they work harder than everybody else. They contribute more. Um, there's a, a perception of an equity there that they're not getting what they're due. They put their time in, they've got the knowledge, they're good workers. So making sure that everybody is, is um, treated fairly and, and paid uh, market value salary or higher. I mean, that's, that's really in, important as well. I, you know, I, I don't believe that it's the employee's responsibility to make sure that they're getting paid fairly. I believe that if you are gonna be an employer and you're going to have employees, then it is your responsibility to ensure that you are paying your employees uh, a fair salary for the work that they're doing. One of the common problems with respect to staffing, I think you're probably the person who who talks, who told me about this or really enlightened me about this the most is that if people are feeling like there's some kind of inequity in the firm, you know, that's where the problem lies. Well, it, it is. It, and I think sometimes that, that can come from, if you don't have an HR person in the firm, um, you've got lawyers treating their assistant uh, in different ways. So this lawyer and assistant team, maybe, maybe this lawyer says, oh, you can take the afternoon off. Um, while all the other legal assistants in the firm are watching wait a second, how come she gets the afternoon off? And it really can create a lot of turmoil within a work environment. So 
having an HR person or having at least one person that has overview of how everybody is treated and, and um, making sure that things are fair across the board is, is really important. That's what builds trust <clears throat> between the staff and, and the owners and their employers. If the staff don't trust their employers, you've got big problems. Very, very true. Lawyers have forgotten, which is interesting because the yeah. lawyers, yes, is that even if somebody in your office perceives that somebody else is being sexually harassed, if that perception of sexual harassment is there, it potentially could be a sexual harassment complaint or problem. So, um, you know, I've heard lawyers say, well, the other partners, you know, so-and-so has disclosed this and the other partners know about it. And, and so there we go. And you're like, but what are you doing about it? <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think I've been, I think I've been lucky in that I haven't had to deal with that. Um, you know, certainly there's been some coaching and, and involved and I, I have had to speak to a couple of lawyers and just say, Hey, you know, I just want to let you know what kind of an effect that comment had or may have had on the people that heard it. And, you know, I, I, I had numerous instances like that, but never had to deal with um, a complaint or something that went beyond that one comment, the conversation and improvement. So uh, I've probably been really lucky. Mm -hmm. Change of the times too. I shouldn't say I've just been lucky. I mean, hopefully there's some evolution there um, in terms of men in particular, knowing what's appropriate and what's not appropriate in the workplace. Right. You have to lay it out sometimes, depending on, um, if people perceive, sometimes perceive sexual harassment and bullying in a very different way. And I mean, one thing to always remember is your intention or non-intention doesn't matter. It's how it's received. It's how it's received. So if the person that you're speaking to uh, perceives you as sexually harassing or bullying in any way, shape, or form, I mean berating, if, if anything that you're doing is making them feel um, <clears throat> like less of a human being, it doesn't matter what your intention is. Right. That's enough for a complaint. Right, right. Thank you for joining me today, Janet. I really appreciate your time. And uh, not just your time, but uh, all this valuable information. And I know that, you know, not just sort of from our listeners and our viewers, I'd like to thank you personally because I've learned a lot from you and I've always really appreciated your feedback, not just the good stuff. <laughs> like, I've always really appreciated that you've been able to give me uh, a lot of good feedback that would, you know, really help me improve in, in, you know, helping you as a, as a recruiter or even just somebody else in, in our, our legal community. So I really appreciate your time. Well, thank you, Ramona. It's been great talking to you. And, um, you know, I've got the utmost of respect for you and what you do. And, uh, you know, your, your value to the legal community here in Victoria, for sure. Thank you.